Hey folks, Guns Gear on target training out here in Oregon. I am making an appeal to all Oregon citizens. There's a ballot, ballot measure number 114, that is on uh, the current voting for all Oregon citizens. That ballot measure is one of the worst uh, ballot measures put forward. It is so anti-gun, so poorly conceived, and so targeted actually at um, people of communities with the least resources. So ballot measure 114 essentially creates a scheme by which you must obtain a state-issued firearms ID card. That card then is kept, all details on that, uh, by the state police to make sure uh, they know who are buying guns in Oregon. Happens to be unconstitutional, but that's irrelevant. And the components of the whole scheme are completely messed up. There is a requirement, first of all, that you get a background check. Now, apparently, whoever created this, and it was a group of volunteers, very anti-gun volunteers that got together, they didn't seem to understand that when you go to buy a firearm to begin with, in the state of Oregon, you are required to get a background check. But in their infinite wisdom, or arrogance, or ignorance, perhaps, they decided, no, it would be better if we require you to have a background check before you ever purchase a firearm, because when you go to purchase a firearm, you'll get another one. Okay, so that's component one. The second component is all, doesn't matter where you are in Oregon, it doesn't matter your background, whether you have training, whether you have a concealed carry permit, whether you have NFA items, none of that stuff matters, because now we are going to require every single person who wants to purchase a firearm to have gone through what the state defines as a training. Now, the training is not clear. It just says you have to go through this training. You have to have understanding of Oregon firearms laws. Hey, I'm all supportive of that part of it. Like, that's fine. But it doesn't define who provides the training. The training pedagogy itself, what you have to do to meet these requirements, are not is not defined at this point. And it also requires a live fire component. Again, I am 100% behind training, but compelling people who don't yet even own a firearm to go through a process that requires that they own a gun because you have to complete a live fire uh, process in that training. Again, I am supportive of that kind of experience, but they have to require it. But they don't own a gun, so how can they possibly complete that? It also does not define, it says you can spend up to $65 for the license that apparently will last five years. Again, don't know if that will ever change. That's not particularly well defined. Nor does it say who are approved, the people that are approved to provide this training. So, we go through all of these hurdles, regardless of the fact whether you have a concealed carry permit now, or whether you've legally purchased firearms to this point, or regardless how much training you currently have, doesn't matter, you have to go back through this mandated training that is not defined. It also does the typical things that Many people who don't understand firearms want to do, they think that there's a magic number of rounds in a magazine that if you have more than those number of rounds, you're worse or more likely to commit crimes versus saying, huh, but if we define the number of rounds of being 10 or less, then those, those are okay. People who have those magazines aren't going to commit crimes. I'm sorry to break it to you folks who created this measure, but Law-abiding citizens do not commit these crimes. These crimes and mass shootings are done by people who are sick, ill, whacked out, who most of them have gone through the very protocols you're talking about of requiring background checks and everything else, and it didn't stop any of them. So folks, if you're an Oregon resident, 
take the time and think about this. There's a woman, she's in a low income area. She does not have financial resources. She may be part of a, a community where she's struggling. Maybe she's a single parent. Maybe she's really struggling. She's working two jobs and there's a threat against her life by a domestic partner, former domestic partner. She does not have the right now to go purchase a firearm without going through all these hoops, which require time, money, effort. She doesn't have those resources. But we're saying to her and to people of minority communities and people who don't have money that, oh, we're going to impose this firearms ID card for your safety. I am sorry, folks, but the people who crafted this obviously did not bother to consult with anyone who knew anything about firearms. So bottom line, if you're an Oregon resident, and you're a citizen of this fantastic state, vote no on measure 114. Hey guys, really appreciate you watching. Sorry for those of you who are not involved in the state of Oregon, uh, but this is really important. And if it isn't happening now to your state, it will be coming soon. And quite frankly, after this, why shouldn't we, right? These same people say, hey, you can't read these kinds of books or express these kinds of ideas, or stream this kind of content unless you have a license issued by the state. So please folks, vote no on Measure 114 if you care about civil liberties, individual rights, and people in minority communities who are often the most impacted by these anti-Second Amendment bills.